Hey guys, it's Victoria and welcome back to Femhead. Today I want to talk about the hormones that play a role in your menstrual cycle. Now if you want to play along, you can click the link in the description box so you can see a graph of the different levels of the hormones and it's kind of helpful to see that as a visual. All right, so I'm going to talk about estrogen, progesterone, a little bit about testosterone, as well as the luteinizing hormone and the follicle stimulating hormone and how those hormones play a role in your menstrual cycle. Okay, so first is estrogen. Estrogen is produced in your ovaries, your adrenal glands, and in your fat tissue. And so what it does, one of its roles, is it helps build the endometrial lining, your uterine lining. Its levels impact the levels of the follicle stimulating hormone and the luteinizing hormone. Next is progesterone. Progesterone is produced in your ovaries, your adrenal glands, and then in the placenta once you become pregnant. That's worth mentioning, but that doesn't really play a role in your normal month-to-month -month menstrual cycle unless you get pregnant. Progesterone helps to balance out the effects of estrogen, so it is known as like the relaxing hormone. Progesterone also helps to thicken the uterine lining and it is also what helps sustain it and nourish it and prepare it for if a fertilized egg does come down the tube. Progesterone also plays a role in your luteal phase and I just know this personally because I was having a luteal phase deficiency, so my luteal phase was shorter than it should be. It should be somewhere between like 11 and 14 days, give or take, and mine was maybe about nine, and there was a lot of spotting involved, and so even though at the time I wasn't trying to get pregnant, if I had been, it would have been nearly impossible because I didn't have a long enough luteal phase to sustain a pregnancy. Next, testosterone, which is produced in your ovaries as well as your adrenal glands. It has a small surge around ovulation as well as a slight rise right before your period. Testosterone is important for maintaining muscle mass and bone strength, which weren't necessarily related to your menstrual cycle, but it also plays a role in your libido as well as an overall zest for life, which I think is very integral to what your menstrual cycle does. And then the two more unknown hormones that play a role that you don't learn about until you start learning about your menstrual cycle are luteinizing hormone and the follicle stimulating hormone. So first we'll talk about the follicle stimulating hormone. So as its name suggests, the follicle stimulating hormone stimulates your follicles to grow eggs. It also plays a role in stimulating estrogen secretion from the growing follicles. And then finally, the luteinizing hormone. So there is a surge of the luteinizing hormone right before ovulation, and it is this surge that actually causes ovulation. And if you're looking at the graph, you'll see the big spike in LH right before ovulation. It results in the formation of the corpus luteum, but that, that then secretes progesterone, which I talked about, which is what controls the length of the luteal phase, as well as whether you can maintain a pregnancy through your luteal phase. So now I wanna break up your cycle into the four weeks and talk about what's happening with each hormone each week. So starting out with week one, all of the hormones start out very, very low. So the estrogen is low at the start of the cycle. And as I mentioned, it is controlling the level of um, luteinizing hormone and the follicle stimulating hormone. And so when estrogen is low, that then sends a signal to your luteinizing hormone, your follicle stimulating hormone to kind of bump up a notch and start working on their roles. So the follicle stimulating hormone is gonna send that signal to the follicles to today, hey, start producing, you know, start growing some eggs that we can choose from at ovulation. So as the estrogen starts to grow over that first week, and I'm sure if you can think to like your period week, think of towards the end of your period, depending on how long it is, I definitely notice a difference at the end of my period from the beginning of the period. You get this boost of like energy, positivity, and like, overall like good feelings and that's because of your estrogen. Week two, the estrogen continues to rise bringing on more of those good feelings and good sensations. Testosterone will rise later in week two and around ovulation and some women will notice a boost in libido around ovulation and this is kind of your body's natural way of saying like, have sex, this is the time to have a baby. Estrogen surges right before ovulation that then sends a signal to your luteinizing hormone to also surge. You need that surge of luteinizing hormone in order to ovulate. Moving on, week three, progesterone starts to rise due to the corpus luteum, um, which is what the follicle becomes after it releases the egg. It turns into corpus luteum and it starts um, secreting progesterone. And like I said, it's kind of that relaxing 
hormone. I always find I'm very calm around this time. My energy levels start to kind of dwindle. While progesterone rises, estrogen and testosterone drop, but then estrogen picks back up at the end of week three. So week four, both estrogen and progesterone plummet. And those are the things that are holding your endometrial lining in place essentially. And that is what causes your period. But of course this week four changes dependent on whether you have a fertilized egg that then implants in your uterus. And then it's kind of a different ball game, but we won't go over that today. This is just, you know, the normal month to month cycle. What happens if you do not get pregnant? Everything kind of plummets and then starts back down at square one with week one. But I think it's interesting to know what's actually going on in your body and what different hormones are causing different things. And I think it's especially important because if you do have some sort of menstrual issue that's going on, so often we just think of our periods and of our menstrual cycles with a lot of negativity and we just don't think anything good comes out of it. And so when something bad's happening or something that shouldn't necessarily be happening, we kind of write that off as like, oh, it's just my period. But if there's something going on and it's, you just have this feeling, this gut feeling that like, this is not normal, seek out an answer because more often than not, you probably have some sort of hormonal imbalance and it could be, end up something being something like endometrius or PCOS. And those are all issues that you can deal with and heal. And anyways, <laughs> Long story short, if you have something going on, don't just deal with it. There are answers out there and force people to listen to you. That is what I have to say about the hormones in your menstrual cycle. Obviously there is more involved to that, but that's kind of the general overview, the easiest way I could think of to explain it. So I wouldn't just like overwhelm you with information. Yeah, I hope you enjoyed it. This is much more of like an educational video. When you start to understand what's going on in your body, it makes sense and it doesn't seem so awful and it actually, starts to seem better in a way. I don't know. I'm a freak about periods. Okay. I'm going to stop rambling. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.